SpaceX is preparing to launch the largest rocket in the history of spaceflight. However, federal regulators have yet to allow it. After months of waiting, the relevant agency recently has given the green light to SpaceX. On September 17th, the Federal Aviation Administration released the Draft Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA. It started a public comment period for the environmental review of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy program at the space company's South Texas launch site. The original plan of this process would last until October 18th, with two virtual public meetings scheduled for October 6th and 7th. However, on September 30th, the FAA extended the public commenting period through the 1st of November. The agency has also changed the time and dates of virtual public comment hearings on October 18th and 20th. The issue is whether the federal agency will approve the private space company's request to launch the massive Starship spacecraft and super heavy launch rockets from its launch site near Boca Chica Beach in Cameron County, Texas. So why is this environmental assessment process so important? Set to be the largest and most powerful rocket in spaceflight history when it begins orbital launches, the process of acquiring permission to launch Starship and its super heavy booster out of the wetlands of the South Texas coast was never going to be easy. The Boca Chica site is surrounded by sensitive coastal habitats populated by several threatened or endangered species and situated mere miles from where crows fly from the city, their temporary population oscillating from a few thousand to tens of thousands. Therefore, SpaceX's Starship launch was met with objections from local environmentalists. Earlier this month, they sent the federal agency a letter demanding data and information on the risks to border communities and wildlife from ongoing rocket testing and launches from the SpaceX facility that borders a beach where endangered sea turtles nest. The group's board members wrote, We believe that Starship Super Heavy poses an unacceptable risk of harm to the nearby communities of Port Isabel, Long Island Village, and South Padre Island, as well as to the immediately adjacent National Wildlife Refuge, State Parkland, and surrounding fragile tidal wetlands. The FAA at the time said that analyses are being conducted that determine collective risk, individual risk, and hazard areas on the ground, sea, and in the air. SpaceX will not receive a license if it cannot meet FAA safety regulations. Jim Chapman, an environmentalist with the group Save RGV and president of the nonprofit Friends of the Wildlife Corridor, was among those who signed off on the letter, and his organizations have been encouraging their supporters to send in public comments on how they feel about SpaceX's growing facility, just a stone's throw away from the Gulf of Mexico. Upon hearing the public commenting period had been extended, Chapman on Thursday said, Anytime you give the public more time to comment, that's a good thing. Therefore, this environmental assessment is especially necessary. It will solve all the questions of those concerned about the impact of SpaceX on the surrounding environment. And what does this FAA draft solve? The current draft, while it does not include the results of environmental assessments by Texas or federal wildlife officials, appears to indicate that SpaceX could sufficiently address environmental concerns in a way that will allow the testing and launches to proceed under federal law. The company will likely be required to hire a biologist to monitor wildlife during construction and testing, as well as other measures that could reduce the environmental effects of construction testing, and launches. The draft does not directly address the main fears from environmental groups that SpaceX is risking the habitat of endangered bird and invertebrate species or the complaints of community groups that the company has failed to abide by its promises with regard to road closures and beach access. How will the results of this review affect SpaceX? If SpaceX's Starbase PEA is approved, it will be more like a foundation or stepping stone that should make it easier to start small and methodically expand the scope and nature of the company's plans for Boca Chica. Along those lines, as part of Starbase's first dedicated environmental assessment, SpaceX has proposed a maximum of 23 flight operations annually, 
while Starship is still in the development phase, including up to 20 suborbital Starship test flights and 3 orbital launches. Once SpaceX has worked out enough kinks for slightly more confident Starship operations, the company would enter an operational phase that would allow for as many as 5 suborbital Starship launches and 5 orbital launches as well as ship and booster landings back on land after all 10 possible launches. In other words, SpaceX's initial draft PEA is extremely conservative, requesting permission for what amounts to be a bare minimum concept of operations for orbital Starship launches. At a maximum of 3 to 5 orbital launches per year, a PEA and subsequent launch license approved as is would likely give SpaceX just enough slack to perform basic Earth orbit launches and no more than one or two orbital refilling tests per year. In theory, with this bare bones PEA approved, SpaceX would then be able to build off the foundation with additional environmental assessments, like for example expanding Starship's maximum launch cadence. Of course, SpaceX first needs the FAA to turn this first draft PEA into a favorable environmental assessment, not a guarantee, before any of the above starts to matter. The next big question is when Starship can launch for the first orbital flight. Combined with the uphill battle that SpaceX will have to wage for an orbital Starship launch license in South Texas, it's looking increasingly likely that Starship, Super Heavy, and Starbase will be technically ready for orbital launch tests well before the FAA is ready to approve or license them. It's increasingly reinforced when SpaceX recently completed the second cryo-proof test for Ship 20. Barring delays, the public now has until the end of October to read and comment on SpaceX's draft PEA, after which the FAA and SpaceX will review those comments and hopefully turn the draft into a completed review. The final FAA product, called a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, will conclude one of three options, that the Starship testing and launches will have no significant impact, that SpaceX needs to take measures to address the impact, or that the project requires an additional and broader environmental assessment because of the potential for measurable negative effects. Even if the FAA were to somehow just take two months to return a best case finding of no significant impact or FONSI, clearing Starbase of environmental launch hurdles, it's hard to imagine that the agency could then turn around and approve an orbital Starship launch license in the last few weeks of 2021. And that's all the information I got for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us with what we do directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.